the YouTube. That's Maker Steve. Uh, we're going to build an Ender 3 today. Uh, yeah, that's why I need another 3D printer. Um, I like to build artillery shells. 3D print them. Piggy banks, lamps. They're uh, large size. They screw together. They're kind of cool. So that's kind of my uh, my thing. Uh, my original challenge when I started 3D printing was to 3D print a 155 artillery shell. I happen to be an artilleryman. So we are going to build an Ender 3 and we are going to make it Ender Steve style. So uh, I do a little custom action when it comes to uh, building these things. Um, the, uh, the Ender 3 is a reliable little printer right out of the box, um, but with a few upgrades it becomes even more reliable um, and it works really well for what I do. It's just the right size to do the 105 millimeter artillery shells that I like to print. Um, so we're going to build one. I'll show you the tweaks that I put in right out of the box um, and we'll make this thing work. Uh, the Ender 3 is a great little printer. I actually uh, bought a couple of these used off eBay. Uh, I'll share the, the link. So I'm at five Ender 3s. Um, we'll unpack this thing and we'll get to it. I built one yesterday, so I shouldn't make too many mistakes. Uh, putting this one together. The great thing about the uh, Ender 3 is it's got a really solid frame um, and it uh, does a great job for the Mundy. Uh, and it's got great build volume for the money. Unpacked. And the box goes boom. Okay. So here's our printer. This is the base. Not sure what this is about. I haven't seen this before. It looks like a piece of wood maybe for packing power supply you got the uh, upright for the frame good news is I've got another one to build uh, shortly, so if I get this video wrong, we'll do it again, but uh, I'm not starting over. Creality says it takes 10 minutes to build this printer. Um, I know what uh, fast and hard work is, and uh, I can tell you that it can't be done in 10 minutes. I'd like to meet the uh, person who actually claims they can do it in 10. There's a control board. Uh, it comes with pretty much everything you need to build it uh, in the package. Power cord. Okay, so where do we get started? Uh, we can do the simple things first. Uh, 
They've got a nice instruction manual that comes with it, but uh, I don't really pay too much attention to instructions. I just kind of go with my own thing. Put that together. Uh, this will hold the spool. It's all set and done. Uh, we got a motor here. We've got our tools. And what I like to do right out of the gate is upgrade the uh, the bed with a couple nuts, so we'll do that real quick. The uh, first image I got, I would um, have to adjust after every uh, print I would do, and it was kind of frustrating. Um, I found a uh, Facebook group led by Luke Hatfield, who's uh, Pretty, pretty good about uh, helping and supporting people who are working with under threes. And uh, he had a uh, issues file which pretty much covered everything that could go wrong with the uh, Ender 3. Now, what I'm doing here is unscrewing the wheel so I can get to the underside of this build plate or the hot plate. And uh, that's going to allow me to keep the uh, bed level print after print after print. So now that we've got that off, we flip the bed over and I've got an assortment of screws that I've purchased. I'll pull out 4M5 or M4 nuts, sorry. Um, we're just going to reinforce the screws on the bed so it can't wiggle uh, left and right between prints. So, you can't see what I'm doing. Four M4 nuts screwed right onto the bed. And uh, if you haven't done this to your Ender 3, it's, uh, you'll thank me for it later. I've got a uh, write-up on makersteve.com that I'll uh, share at the bottom. And I'll post all my Ender 3 fixes because there's uh, quite a few. Um, that help to get this thing reliable. Now this uh, one was a used one. Um, I can't see that it's ever been used, but it doesn't have the removable build plate. Um, and we'll probably go over how to swap that out. I ordered a magnetic one, um, but it's coming from China, plus tariffs. And so when it gets here, uh, I'll go through how to remove and uh, get that going. Okay, so the strainer and leaf here, uh, you want to pull it off, remove that spring, and then put a nut on there. So basically we've got a nut on each one of these uprights that holds the uh, bed in place. So now, We'll find one of our little wrenches. I think we had one that wrench. We just want to snug these up just a little bit. Now you got to be careful not to push down 
because it'll poke through the material that is your build plate and you don't want that. Okay, so they're snugged up. We're going to put that spring back on there, put the spring relief back on, and uh, now we're ready to put this guy back on the printer. Um, all the cables are hanging loose right now, so you've got to be kind of careful with that. Um, pick up your springs. Build plate back on its rail. Got one more spring hanging around here somewhere. Which fell in my drawer. Okay, now the wheels go back on. the uh, screws and you can push down on the build plate a little bit which will make it so once you get it started it'll spin pretty freely The strain relief on it is a little more difficult uh, than the others. We'll just put them on here and uh, get them situated. You'll see the bed wiggles a little bit, so we're going to grab our trusty wrench and look for the eccentric nuts underneath and just snug them up uh, so it doesn't wiggle. Uh, the eccentric nuts are what is used to tighten the rollers to the V-slot uh, aluminum extrusion. And the uh, as you turn it, it gets tighter or looser depending on what's going on. Uh, they're, they're offset. So now... The bed moves pretty nicely. Okay, we'll untangle our cords a little bit. And now, what I like to do is take the power supply and set it to the side here and leave the build plate on it. And then I'm able to take my uprights. So uh, you've got, for the power supply side, you've got an upright with uh, two screw holes in it. And uh, they go on the inside. So now we've identified that. We'll pull out our screws. And it's the pack of heavier duty uh, M545s. And I kind of make a mess as I work, but I'm willing to accept that. And so have my co workers. Uh, what I like to do is use some Loctite tight, uh, medium strength um, thread locker in the stick. And just work the threads a little bit with that. Uh, get a little dab on there. 
uh, especially on the, the uh, hot end, anytime I do any work on that, I tend to put a little bit. The nice thing about the blue, it doesn't require heat to remove it. Uh, so we'll put a screw in the bottom. Grab the other. And grab our big Allen wrench and tighten these up. Uh, I would just snug up the first one and then uh, nail the second one. Make sure it's centered and flush, and you can just tighten that up. Okay, so one upright is complete. And now, we can just lean it on the second upright. And we just gotta make sure we orient it correctly. The two holes here are gonna hold um, the Z-axis motor. So we've got that the way we want it. We'll grab a couple screws, do a little Loctite action, just turn the thread in there, pick up a little goop, Again, snug up the first one, work on get flush and square. Tighten the second one. Should go in uh, relatively easy. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to check is to see if it's level on the, on the surface. It shouldn't rock too much. Uh, most enders kind of do that. Um, make sure there's no cables under it. This one rocks a little bit, so we can loosen up the bottom frame, both sides, and see if we can press that out of it. Uh, I have successfully got the wobble out of uh, one of my printers and not so much uh, the other. I just got it to lessen by doing this. Feels a little better. So we'll tighten it back up. I'll do a little on this side and go to the other. Yeah, that's definitely had an improvement. I don't know what they're doing at the factory, but they could probably um, work that out before we get it. But uh, I've definitely seen improvements in the Creality printers. I bought a CR10. Uh, about a year ago, that's where the bugs started, and uh, I just recently bought a CR10S with dual screws, and it came with the big wheels and a lot of the things you had to 3D print um, when you first got the printer. So now we're ready to attach uh, the power supply. 
uh, careful of the cord. Um, one thing to note, they come from the factory set to uh, 230, um, which is the equivalent of 220. And while my printers are running on 220 power, um, this one, when I test it on this bench, is going to be uh, set to 115. Okay. I'm going to cheat every now and again and look over at uh, the printers I already put together. I've got some uh, cap screws over here that are black and, well, they look a little better than the silver ones they sent me. So I'll swap those out real quick. I'll find my Loctite stick. So you're looking for two screws like so. Put a little dab on there. And of course, we put that guy in upside down. It was bound to happen. I knew what I was getting into. Uh, initially, I uh, had spent quite a bit of time putting things together and then putting them together another way uh, because I'd put them together wrong. Uh, that's part of the great wonder of do it yourself. that come from Creality um, have the rounded uh, articulating end so you can get in at an angle if you need to which is great for uh, tightening something up but it is not good when it comes to, to actually uh, locking it into place so I'll use it to get the uh, screws started and just about set and to avoid stripping out the uh, nut end. I'll switch to the short side and snug them up. And you know what you're doing here, they don't have to be super tight. Okay, power supply is on. We'll slide this back a little bit and we'll work on the gantry. Um, you've got uh, Two pieces of metal left. One is longer than the other. Um, one's going to do your upright, like so, um, and the other one is going to uh, be what the uh, hot end rides on. So this is the extruder extruder assembly, excuse me, and um, it's going to take a little bit to get set up, but it only goes on one way, and you'll see there's three holes there, and one of them's wallered out a little more, it's just made to set on top, and then the, uh, the extrusion metal is uh, tapped and threaded, so basically you're going through to the other. So what I've done in the past is I 
stack it like this, set it up like that. And I'm going to go to the instructions to make sure I open the right bag. Yep, I did it. So I'm jumping around, but I'm okay with that. And uh, we're gonna get the uh, the bag that says M4 by 16 on it. There we go. Grab two of those, put a little dope on them. And this is always fun. We'll drop the screws in the hole that's underneath. because you're going through one piece of metal to get to the the screw um, and you just want to be careful uh, not to strip it Pretty sure we're well past the 10 minute part, and even though uh, I had to take a part off and put it back on, um, I wasn't going to be anywhere near done in 10 minutes. There's a little bit of creative wrenching that goes on. And you firm them up. But before you start torquing on them, make sure the head is buried in the nut, otherwise you're gonna have a stripped part. Okay, so um, now we're gonna grab our hot end. We're gonna try to un untangle this cable and make sure it doesn't have any more turns in it than it needs uh, before we put it on. So you, when you pick this up and you go to slide it on, sometimes it'll go right on, um, and other times uh, the eccentric nut is too tight. Uh, this one went on pretty easy, so I'm just going to snug it up because I don't want it moving around too much while I'm working. So it should ride on there nicely. And then we have a uh, bracket hanging around.
or not. Like we're uh, going to be sending Creality an email asking them where that part is. We're going to hit pause and we're going to figure out what we're doing about that part. Be right back. 